What do you do with a teenager who's going off the rails? Send them to boot camp, apparently. It may seem extreme, but it's an idea being pioneered in Queensland for troubled teens in the hope of saving them from ending up in the juvenile justice system. The 10-day wilderness camp is just part of a three-month program. And it's early days, but it might just be working. Alex Mann from Triple J's Hack Program joined a group of boys on their confronting journey for part one of our two-part special on the boot camp trial. Put that stuff inside and yeah, close, sure. make sure the doors are closed. They're the kids no one else knows how to help. How did you get suspended from TAFE? Throwing tables and chairs at teachers. That reeks in your nuts. Well, he was getting further and further behind at school and getting into more and more trouble. Can you make sure that the tent doors are, are closed, please? School expulsions, drug use and one step from a criminal record. Five families, ten days of boot camp in the Queensland bush. It's an experiment they hope will be a life changer. <laughs> well done. Yes. You can hoodwink someone in an hour therapy session. You can, you can hoodwink someone in the classroom for little bits and you can blame it on everybody else. Um, but when you're out here and everything's stripped away and everything's stripped back, there's nowhere to hide. At a community centre in the Gold Coast hinterland, five boys are getting ready for camp. The ten days ahead are just the start of their three-month intensive program. These kids uh, are not involved in the criminal justice system, they're at risk. This will be tough, they will be pushed outside their comfort zone. Um, they understand that they are on this program um, because they want to have a positive future and they understand that uh, that's at risk at the moment. Mission and a half. Kyle is 14 and has had a tough few years. His life started to spiral when age 12 he found his father's body after he suicided. Oh, finally. Was that a traumatic experience? Yeah, I saw him and just everything fell down from there. And, but me, my mum and my sister got through it and we still remember him but we're moving on in life and he'll never be forgotten. Mm. What did you do to end up here? Um, mainly my attitude towards my parents, my mum, um, just too much and then eventually it just crumbled. I'm afraid that Kyle will not progress in life. He'll fall further and further behind at school and then he'll end up in the juvenile detention centres or in prison later. It's going to be a very tough week. I um, had a lot of problems during my life, but I think this camp's going to really change my life. My parents wanted me to come here to try to, um, you know, learn some skills, life skills and stuff, so then I can get better with school and everything, so... Manning up and saying, well, I did this wrong. Jake had a troubled childhood with drug and alcohol abuse in the family. He was playing up at school. Just not respecting um, class rules and stuff. I was just don't, not really good with it because I'm swearing a lot, just not being, being really disrespectful. Jake, don't, don't touch other people's stuff without asking. Cool. He puts it down to the years spent with his alcoholic mother, kept inside for weeks on end. She would only leave the house about once every three months and she would just go, pretty much just go out the front door and walk straight back in because she, she smokes a lot of pot and drinks a lot, so I don't agree with it, but... There's not much I can do with it. I've been trying to um, get her off it for a lot of years now, but she, she just has a really bad addiction, so she stays with it. Let's all look after each other. Um... Josh is 15 and was suspended for smoking drugs during school. I was caught in a smoke, um, smoking weed in a public car park, and the school recommended me. Yeah, for this camp. Were you? scared when you first rocked up here about what this might mean, what yeah. kind of camp they're actually going to be giving you? Yeah, I was a little, a little nervous, but then I kind of met the other guys and was, I thought this was going to be a good camp. Um, I, I think I'm hoping that Josh takes on the experience, uh, that he uh, grows over the 10 days and that um, you know, he learns some more skills. I hope he realises that um, he has the ability to be a beautiful young man.
did see the sunrise this morning. Each day on camp starts the same way, with a commitment circle pushing the boys to reflect on the camp's values and goals. When you're ready to commit to doing those things today, take a step Mate. inside. Mateship. Mateship, yeah. Leadership. Leadership. Determination. Determination. It's not a military style uh, yelling and screaming boot camp. This is a, a, a program that has uh, a wilderness experience and it also has a whole bunch of uh, empirically evidenced psychological interventions that enable young people to develop skills and strategies to um, understand the environment, understand their social circumstances and make positive decisions. So we're saying 100% commitment to everything. Yeah. For everything today. today. Yep. Oh, but no. the camp proves tough for everyone right from the start. Can we do like 50 15? <laughs> There's been some tantrums. There's been some, some you know, bullying. There's been, um, you know, people not wanting to do what they're supposed to do. There's been people going places they're not supposed to go. There are always being preached to me and not being that, not, not being that nice. Trying to get abused and... Yep, fair enough. I don't want you to be abused either, mate. That's, I think that's fair enough. Nobody, nobody here should be abused. Yeah. And yeah, I just don't want to fight with anyone, but it comes to it, it comes to it. We all say that we're committed and we just don't commit to it. That's why this, that's why this time I took a little bit to stand in a circle. I wanted to know if everyone was committed to what I thought. Are you happy to join the group for us for yeah, that one? Yeah, I'm pretty much 100%. <laughs> We've had a few arguments up here because I don't know they were homesick and they didn't want to be here and they were getting sick of all the other um, guys that were here. So, what was your argument over? I uh, was kid was because um, someone was having a bit of a bad time and I wanted to go to sleep and he called me a name over it and I got a bit angry. So, yeah. But what, I what wanted. Happened? To, hey. What happened? Uh, I went up to him and started swearing at him. I, I actually can't remember. I think I hit him or something, but it's all over now. <laughs> It's all good. We welcome those situations. We welcome the tensions. We welcome um, the annoyance and frustration because that's an opportunity for us to show these boys how a, a mature member of the community, a, a pro-social member of the community, deals with that type of situation. Righto, Josh, you can let that one go. Hello! Jake's challenge today is to conquer his fear of heights. Yeah, just anxious and scared. I'm not 100% on it, but I'm going to do it. There's no, there's no point in not doing it, so, yeah, I'm pretty scared. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think personally it takes a lot more courage in a, in a group like this to, uh, to admit that you're a little bit anxious about things in front of your mates and make a decision to... Um, to say, no, I'm not going to do that. And that shows a lot of character. Jake's fear of heights gets the better of him and he backs out of the challenge. Oh yeah, I bailed out, pushed out, didn't want to do it. It's a bit high for me, I'm really not good at fights, so. Do you feel disappointed? Yeah, really, actually really do, do feel really disappointed, which is not very good. Don't like feeling like that, but oh, some other day. <laughs> But it's exactly the type of scenario that the camp coordinators were hoping for. These kids are approached by somebody that, and encouraged to do something which is not appropriate, whether that be taking drugs or skipping school or being disrespectful to the teacher. Um, you know, they are, are now laying the seeds for that foundation of knowing it is actually as courageous to say no. What kind of things do you wish you'd said no to? Graffiti, like you just told about me, yeah, I did something a while ago which caused everything a little worse because I was going through a bit of a bad time and it made everything worse by graffitiing the school, so yeah, it wasn't, really, wasn't a good idea, I'll tell you that. It's day seven of the 10 day camp and tempers are frayed. The atmosphere this morning um, has been uh, challenging. Yeah, we've um, we've had a, a couple of things go on um, during the night, which which we might or might not sort of talk about a little bit later.
Some of the boys got into the camp office, stealing mobile phones, alcohol and food, and the incident still hasn't been resolved. It was probably something that, um, in one way, we didn't want to happen, but in another way, it's, um, it's I think, incidents where, where the guys have to face up to some of the things they do and uh, maybe face up to some consequences and they are, are good. The boys' parents are arriving and the boys are nervous. Is anyone getting butterflies at all? No, no. no I'm getting a bit pissed off. <laughs> That's one of the away. Nick, hey guys. Some of the parents notice a change already. He just came up and hugged me and he just seemed a lot happier than what he's been for a long time. Oh, Hi sister! Oh daddy! <laughs> I think that he's um, already learnt a bit from being here. I was just watching him put up tents and make make lunch and he wasn't asked to do it. At home he's always asked to do it and never does it. You put all your pots and stuff. But for some boys the parents' presence is a painful reminder of the life to which they'll soon return. He said, oh can I take you for a walk up here dad? And I said, yeah, I want to talk to you. And I said, okay. And he said, um, do you reckon you can go? <laughs> I said, oh, go where? And he goes, go home. And I said, oh, what for? And he says, oh, no reason, just don't want you here. Yeah, sometimes I like to have a bit of privacy, but, yeah, because not, not, not everyone likes to be in groups all the time, so sometimes I like to be by myself. That's, that's the hard thing of being a parent, I suppose, and you don't know what's happening with your kid. You know, they don't, they don't want to tell you what's happening, and so you can't really push, push for answers all the time, because then uh, maybe a bit of anger comes out, <laughs> which what happens, you know. That's half the reason why he's here. What's the like? What's it been like? Hi, how are you? Great. I've been having a shower for like nearly six years. Yeah? yeah? What's shit about him? He was pretty distant and didn't really seem, you know, overly excited or happy to see Paula and I. He was just, you know, sort of, yeah, whatever. You know, so that was a bit disappointing. Oh, it's a surprise. His parents don't know it yet, but Josh is in trouble from the events of the night before. I'm not quite sure why they think this would be the best possible way for me. I know it's an early prevention program and they're worried about me. Yeah, but I see stuff very logical. Um, I don't get the best out of meaningful counselling and stuff like that. This will be the last night of camp for Josh. He and another boy have been kicked out for their role in the incident the night before and not owning up to it. To them, it's like we've kind of betrayed them, really. So... How does it feel? Did it feel like you betrayed them? No. <laughs> but I probably shouldn't have done it. For the other boys, there are three more days of boot camp to go. Alex Mann reporting there and tomorrow night we'll take you back to boot camp for part two of our special to see how the boys are faring and we'll visit the Gold Coast to check how young Josh is going after he was kicked off the camp.